Welcome to Wednesday on the Hook, part two of our single crochet dishcloth. I am excited about spending this time with you, so if you're ready, then let's head on over to the craft table and put that border on our dishcloth. So I first want to start off by showing you the pink dishcloth that I did as an example and showing it to you with the completed border already on. So you can see how it gives it just kind of that nice rounded finished touch. And then that's what yours is going to look like when we are finished. So let's get started. So we're going to remove that one and bring ours back in. And now I do like using the wooden bowls to kind of help hold my yarn in place. I do have a smaller bowl, but I just happen to have had my big one handy. And also for today's tutorial, you are going to need a yarn needle and a pair of scissors to finish off our dishcloth. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is remove our stitch marker that we put on last week. And then we're going to pick up right where we left off. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to chain one. So we're going to yarn over and pull through our loop. Okay? And then we are going to single crochet right into this very corner stitch right here and of course yarn over and pull through two loops alright so this is going to be our corner so I like to use odd numbers in my corners and I will show you why especially if I am thinking about doubling the width of the border Alright, so we're going to do two more into that one corner. So we've already done one, so we're going to do two and three. And I'm going a little bit faster because by now making the body of the dishcloth, you've had a little bit of practice making your single crochets. So now going along this edge here, you can kind of see where the end of your rows have ended. So we're going to do a single crochet in the end of each of these rows. That way we're going evenly across. Because if you do, you know, a couple stitches too short, then your, your project's going to end up bunching up a little bit. If you do it a little too many, then your project is going to end up being all wonky. Okay? So you just want to make a single crochet right at the end of each row to keep it even. And I'll do a few with you. So I'm going to go right into that next stitch and do a single crochet. I'm going to go at the end of the stitch on the next row and just do a single crochet. The stitch at the end of the next row and do a single crochet. Okay. And I'm just going to keep doing that all the way down to the next corner. So you go ahead and finish your row down to the next corner and I will meet you there. Alright, so we are now back down to that next corner. And we're going to do with it just like we did at the very beginning corner. We are going to single crochet three single crochets into that one stitch right there at the corner so that we are rounding our corner off. Okay. And then we're going to turn our work. So now if you'll remember when we made our foundation row, I had you crochet into the very top loop only leaving the two loops on the bottom. And this is why I do it that way, so that when I'm going to put a border on it, I can easily get into that stitch and I have two loops there that will help secure it and it will also keep it closer to the project 
versus creating a gap and stretching it open and creating a hole. All right, so I'm just going to single crochet into each of those already stitches that I have, almost like I'm just going across creating another row. And you can see how easily the hook just goes into those stitches. All right, so finish that row and I'll meet you at the next corner. And that's where we will also meet up with our beginning chain tail. And I'll show you what to do with that. All right, so now we're down to this next corner. And you can already start to see how your dishcloth is starting to take on that nice, you know, rounded edge and giving it that smooth finished look compared to the raw edge that still hasn't been done. Okay? All right, so we're going to do the same thing in this corner. We're going to do three single crochets, but we're also going to start um securing our tail down okay so we can hide it now if you see I've got this hole right here that's only where my knot really was for my slip knot so I'm gonna make sure I go under both of the chains in that corner okay alright so I'm gonna single crochet but as I'm single crocheting I'm gonna make sure that this this chain this tail excuse me is up against my work and I'm going to catch it and just hide it within my work and so that was my second single crochet and my third single crochet alright so that's my corner so I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to keep making single crochets and I'm going to keep securing that tail and just crocheting right over the top of it so I am hiding it actually in the work itself. And after you've done that for a couple stitches, then you can just trim off the rest of that tail. All right, that's good enough. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim off the rest of that and then I can just throw that away. And then you're just going to continue on around doing your single crochets. Remember to do three in the corner and I will meet you back at the very last corner where we started putting our border on. All right, so now we're back at that beginning corner, but I saved the very last stitch, so I'm going to single crochet into that last stitch, and now I'm meeting back up with where I began. So what I need to do is I need to close it off. Now, you can stop here if you want, but because I did it in single crochet, I like for my border to be a little bit thicker. So if you'll see, I've got more of a definitive width around that border compared to this one. So I'm going to do another row around my border. Now whether I'm adding another row or not, you need to slip stitch into the very next stitch, which would have been the first single crochet into your corner. Sometimes it's tight and you have to just wiggle your hook in there. And there we go and then you're going to pull it through again just wiggle it through all right but rather than doing a single crochet we're going to slip stitch and to slip stitch you just simply pull it right through that loop and then if that's all you wanted was that one border row then you would just go ahead and you know tie off your work but since I am going to add another one, I'm going to chain one, and this is why I like an odd number in my corners. I slip stitch into the first to secure it and even the row out, 
but now I'm in that middle stitch is where I'm going to create my next corner so I have it right at the tip of that corner so I'm going to do my three single crochets right into that corner stitch and then one single crochet into the third single crochet that I originally put in that corner Oops. and then I'm going to start my side and I'm just going to go around just like I did on the first row of the border remembering to do three single crochets in that very top tip corner single crochet all right so give that a go and I will meet you around at the very end when we meet back up right here and I'll show you how to tie off your work alright so now we are back around to that very beginning corner and we're going to tie off our work so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert our hook into that very first single crochet that we made into our corner we're going to yarn over and pull through and we're going to slip stitch it right into that other loop all right then we're going to take it create a little bit of a tail I like to give myself a little bit just to make sure I secure it in good but you don't need a whole lot all right and then we don't need the rest of that and then you're going to take it and you're going to pull it through now a lot of people will just continue to pull it through oops sorry but I like to make sure mine is really knotted down and secure so I will loop it one more time and double do it and then just pull it into the knot down to the work like that so I know that it's really really secure all right and then you're going to get it and put it on your yarn needle just like that and then I like to flip mine and work through the back of the work but you're just going to secure it and you're just going to go under just a couple of the loops on the back like this and you can see kind of that little V there see how the, the yarn creates those V's I'm just going to go under a few of those and then just pull my yarn through okay and then I'm gonna straighten it back out because I don't want it pulled so tight that it changes the shape of my work so pull it back out and then turn it and we're gonna go back but when we go back see how we came under this was the last loop that we came under we're going to go over the top of that one and then go back through those V's working underneath them and pull it through and then straighten it and what keeps this in is when the yarn is going one way and then sent back the other way it can't pull out so it's nice and snug and secure and so then just take your scissors and clip off what's left and you have your finished dishcloth. So give yourself a hand. You've just successfully done your single crochet dishcloth. So next week I'm going to introduce a new stitch to you which is the half double crochet and we're going to make a dishcloth using the half double crochet. So again you will need a skein of yarn um, cotton yarn and this time I'm going to be using a sugar and cream the colorway that I will use is going to be in motion is the name of it but I was trying to pick another vibrant bright springy color all right and again for that you'll need your size 6 J hook a pair of scissors and a yarn needle we are going to complete the whole dishcloth in that tutorial. 
so you won't need a stitch marker. All right. But before I end this video, I did get some requests if okay. I could possibly show how to make the upcoming stitch so that you can also practice it. And so that I'm going to do. And I'm going to do it using some of my leftover pastel pink yarn. So the first thing we're going to do is chain 26, but the first thing we have to do is create our slip knot. And then we're going to chain 26. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Whoops, that one's a little loose. I don't. Keep it nice and even. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. All right, we're only going to have 25 going across, but remember the 26 is going to be our turning chain. All right. So to do a half double crochet, we do it just like we did the single crochet, but we have a step that we do first, and that is we yarn over on our hook, okay? And remember, we're gonna use the very first chain because the one on the hook does not count as a chain. So we're gonna use our very first chain to skip it and use it as our turning chain. So we're gonna go into the next one We've wrapped our yarn on our hook, and then we're going to insert it just like we would with the single crochet. But because we yarned over first, we now have three loops on the chain, okay? We're gonna yarn over just like we do with the single crochet, but instead of pulling through two loops on the hook, we're gonna pull through all three. And you've just completed a half double crochet. So let's do another one. We're gonna yarn over, Insert our hook into that top loop only. Yarn over and pull through. We have three loops on the hook. We're gonna yarn over and pull through all three. That is our second half double crochet. We're gonna yarn over, insert our hook in the top loop only. Yarn over and pull through. Three loops on the hook, yarn over, and pull through all three. And you'll notice, okay, from your single crochet, your height is a little bit wider. So this stitch is going to work up faster and higher than your single crochet. So let's do a couple more. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over and pull through, three loops on the hook, Yarn over and pull through all three. Let's do a couple more. All right, so keep practicing that all the way to the end. All right, so we're at our very last stitch. So we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook, yarn over, three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all three. And that is our last stitch for that row. So to start the next row and increase the height of it, we need to yarn over and chain one. Turn our work, and it's just like when we did the single crochet. Now, if you'll look at your work, you'll notice that the height, it's almost the same height as two single crochet rows. All right, so we're gonna yarn over. And now, since we're no longer doing the foundation row, we're gonna go up under those top two 
strands that create like a V. Okay, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. Yarn over, go through the top two loops. Yarn over, three loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all three. Yarn over, go into that next stitch. Yarn over and pull through all three. All right. Oops, got the yarn over. And just keep doing that all the way across. And remember, when you get to the end, don't forget to chain one before turning your work so you can increase the height of your row. So give that a practice and then I will meet up with you next Wednesday for Wednesday on the hook as we make our half double crochet dishcloth. If you like this video be sure and give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already, hit subscribe and hit all so you don't miss any of our Wednesday on the Hook tutorials. And until next week, stay crafty in your own way, and I'll see you for Wednesday on the Hook. Bye!